The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're continuing to talk about digital logic and learning about combinational logic devices. Logic devices more complex than individual logic gates can be described as combinational logic or sequential logic. In combinational logic, the output is a product of the current states of the inputs. In sequential logic, the output is dependent on the current state of its inputs, but also the previous state of its inputs. In a way, sequential logic has memory, while combinational logic does not. We'll get into sequential logic devices in a future episode. The most common combinational logic devices are multiplexers, demultiplexers, encoders, and decoders. Multiplexers, sometimes called data selectors or MUXs, act as digitally controlled switches. This 74LS157 is a four channel, two to one, data selector multiplexer. You can see that there are four sets or channels that each have two inputs yielding one output. At the bottom, you can see pin one is select and pin 15 is enable. Let's talk about those. There are effectively four things that affect the output on each channel. Inputs A and B can be high one or low zero. The select pin digitally flips the switch between inputs. A is selected when pin one is high. B is selected when pin one is low. The enable pin, pin 15, can effectively connect or disconnect the outputs from the inputs. The output is enabled if pin 15 is low or disabled when pin 15 is high. So let's say pins two, five, six, 10, and 13 were all high and the other inputs are low. If pin one, the select pin was high and the enable pin, pin 15, was low, all the A's would be selected and the output would be enabled. Pin four would be high, pin seven would be high, pin nine would be low, and pin 12 would be low. Now if pin one was low and pin 15 was low, all the B's would be selected and the output is still enabled. Pin four would be low, pin seven would be high, pin nine would be high, and pin 12 would be high. At any point, if pin 15 goes high, the outputs are disabled. For this chip, disabled means all the outputs go low. No signal gets through from any input. Here's the logic diagram for this chip. You can see the four different channels. This MUX is two to one, so two inputs go to one output. Another type is the four to one multiplexer, like you can see here. Each channel has four inputs, one enable pin and one output. The two selector pins affect both channels. Lastly, there are eight to one MUXs. This one has three selectors that can focus on the state of a single input to determine the output, while the state of the other inputs don't matter. This MUX has two outputs. One is the normal output, Y. The other is called not Y and gives you the option of the inverse of the first output. Demultiplexers or demuxes work like multiplexers in reverse. While a mux takes multiple inputs and routes them to a single output, demuxes take a single input and route them to multiple outputs. Muxes and demuxes are two to the n devices where n equals the number of select lines. Two to the first would be a two to one mux or one to two demux and each has one selector line. A two to the second, which equals four, is a four to one mux or a one to four demux and each have two selector lines. A two to the third, which equals eight, is an eight to one mux or a one to eight demux and each have three selector lines. In a demultiplexer, the selector pins are used to determine which output is selected. In this one to eight active low demux, the states of the three selector lines determines which of the eight outputs is enabled. In this one to two demux, pin one is the selector S and pin three is the input A. If the selector is low, output Y0 is enabled. If the selector is high, output Y1 is enabled. 
Muxes and demuxes transmit data from single inputs to single outputs, and that data is typically logic level. Multiplexers and demultiplexers are used for more simple signal mapping. For more specific applications, encoders and decoders are used to translate one form of data into another. Binary encoders take the data at their inputs, figure out what number it represents, and then output that data as a binary code. You can see here that input 0 yields an output of binary 0, input 1 an output of binary 1, input 2 an output of binary 2, and input 3 an output of binary 3. However, if inputs 1 and 2 were both active, their outputs could combine and appear the same as if just input 3 were active. That could be problematic. That problem can be solved by using a priority encoder. In a priority encoder, input pins have a priority range from highest to lowest. This is an active low chip. So you can see in the left EI enable input pin column that the pin must be set low for the inputs to affect the output. Pin 7 has the highest priority and is active low. So if it is set to low, all the lower priority inputs are ignored, as represented by the X's. X means high or low because they don't matter. Now if input 5 was set low, it wouldn't matter if pins 0 through 4 were high or low, but pins 6 and 7 have to be set high, effectively off. If either input 6 or 7 were to go low, they would become the new priority, and the state of 5 would no longer matter. So the priority encoder takes the number at the input and outputs that number in binary. Since this is an active low device, a binary 1 is represented as low, not high. When input 0 is low, the output is high, 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 which is a binary 0. When input 1 is low, the output is high, high, low, binary 1. When input 2 is low, the output is high, low, high, binary 2, and so on. As long as one of the inputs is low, that number is output in binary. If no input is active, then output is binary 0. Priority encoders can be used in keyboards for positional control, like in robot arms or ship navigation, or detecting interrupts when working with microprocessors. While binary encoders take data and translate it to its binary equivalent, binary decoders take binary and translate it to other forms of data, like decimal. The combinations of low and high at the inputs determine which output line is supplied a signal. Sound familiar? It should. They're basically demultiplexers, and you'll often find ICs labeled with both. Another common type of decoder translates BCD in order to control seven-segment displays. Seven-segment displays are used to display numbers by the use of seven LED-lit segments. Each segment has one pin and can be sent signals high or low to turn them on or off in order to create each number. You can see that to display the number zero requires six segments to be on, while the number one requires only two segments to be active. Binary is a base 2 system as opposed to our common base 10 system, so 5 in base 10 is 101 in binary. BCD, or binary coded decimal, is similar to binary, except it is broken down into 4 digit binary. You can see this on the chart where binary would typically get to a fifth digit, like for decimal number 10. 1010 is not a valid BCD number. Any binary number above that are unused in BCD. Instead, the number is carried over to the next set of four-digit binary. The first four digits resets to zero, then begins counting up again. So BCD to seven-segment decoders take four inputs of BCD data and translate it to seven outputs that control the segments of the display. Lastly, there are also BCD to decimal decoders. Decimal is base 10 counting, so those decoders have 10 outputs, one for each numeral 0 through 9. One simple characteristic to note is that encoders have more inputs than outputs, and decoders have more outputs than inputs. Think of it in terms of zip files. 
Encoders take the data and make it smaller, like zipping a file. Decoders take the data and make it bigger, like unzipping a file. Hopefully you understand these combinational logic devices better now, and I didn't just confuse you further. But if you do have questions, or if you'd like to share more about muxes, demuxes, encoders, and decoders, post on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!